Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to continue on. This is part two of uh, practice problems with tangent secants and two tangent theorem. I believe we have three, potentially four problems to look at. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so we're on number 25. We, we're given two concentric circles. One uh, is the blue, the smaller circle, uh, with center E. I know that this length here of the chord. Uh, that's also a tangent segment or a tangent line with two tangent segments here. AB is equal to 40 units and CD is going to be equal to 24. I also know that CD is perpendicular. CD is perpendicular to AE. Uh, and AB is tangent uh, at point C here for the smaller circle. So we're asked to find the distance of AF. All right, so this gets a little tricky. I'm going to walk through this step by step. All right, so I know that CD here is 24 units. I know that the radius here from uh, E to F is going to be the perpendicular bisector of CD. So I can divide uh, CD into two segments, CE and EE. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, E is our center. So we're going to label this point. We're going to label this point here of intersection between EF and CD as G. Uh, all right, so and I just changed that. So CG squared, so my base squared, plus AG squared, another leg squared, is equal to my hypotenuse squared. Now, I was able to figure out that um, AC and CB are going to be congruent. Uh, again, because if I draw E to C, this point of tangency is going to be the perpendicular bisector of this chord in the larger circle. So um, AC ends up being congruent to CB. I know that AB is four units, so 40 units. So AC, my hypotenuse for this triangle here, GAC is equal to 20. So I can figure out <clears throat> using my three, four, five Pythagorean triple that A to G is gonna uh, be 16 units. All right, so I have AG equal to 16 units. I've solved some other problems here, CG and AC uh, uh, equal to 12 and 20 units respectively. All right, now I can figure out that my length here from G to E, or EG, is going to be nine units. And how do I do that? And this is why I love the book uh, that we're currently using. It, it's a spiraling content that we've learned in prior sections. So you have to remember your altitude and hypotenuse theorem. So remember that this uh, is a right angle here. CEA is a right angle, so I have an altitude and hypotenuse CG is equal to 12 units. AG uh, is equal to 16. So I can figure out that GE uh, is going to end up being, uh, it's going to end up being, well, let's, let's work out that altitude and hypotenuse. CG squared is equal to, so CG squared, remember, is equal to EG times GA. So 12 squared, which is CG, is equal to EG which we don't know, times 16. And if you do the math, you end up with EG being equal to nine. So that's how we figured out this length here, E to G, as being equal to nine. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna find out the length of the radius of the smaller circle. And we're gonna do that by figuring out what CE is. So CE is a radius, and the EF is also the radius. What we're after is EF. Uh, because we can use that to figure out uh, what AF is, um, because we know that AE is 25 units. All right, so CG, uh, CG squared plus GE squared is equal to our hypotenuse CE squared. Uh, and CG is 12, so 12 squared plus 9 squared EG squared is equal to CE squared. CE ends up being 15. That also means that EF, the same a radius for the same circle is equal to 15. All right, so now we have that information, we can figure out what the length of AF is. Now AF is just going to be AE, uh, which is A to the center, so the larger radius, minus GE. And we know that uh, AE is going to be 25. And then I subtract uh, 15 units, which is the length of um, uh, F, uh, FE, and I end up with 10 units as 
the distance from A to F. So we figured out that FE is 15 units here in the bottom right. And we figured out that A to E is 25 units. It's the 16 units from A to G, and then the 9 units from G to E. So 25 minus 15 gives us A F, segment AF, which is equal to 10 units. Right, so I mentioned it a little bit tricky on this. We have several steps to take. Uh, hopefully you were able to follow. You can always go back and re-listen. You can also take a look at the calculations here to figure out what we just accomplished. All right, uh, number 27. I'm given circle E and F, so two circles uh, which are uh, tangent to each other, externally tangent. And they have uh, AC, which is tangent to both circles. So I have a common tangent, and they're tangent at point B and C. With DE, the radius of E, circle E, equal 10, equaling 10 units. And the radius of circle F, so F to B, is going to be equal to 4 units. So now we want to find out what A to B is. All right, so here we go. So what I want to do is I want to use uh, the processes that I've learned for uh, finding common external tangents first. And what I want to do is I want to find the length of uh, CB. And I do that by drawing uh, the radius to the points of tangency. I'm creating right angles here and here. And I've created really a rectangle. So if I can find out what CB is, then I have the length, or ZF, excuse me. Uh, then I can figure out what the length of CB is. So Z here is this point, and F here is a point uh, in the center of the smaller circle. So I know that if FB is 4, then CZ here is also going to be 4. I know that my radius from E to C is 10. I was given that. So I know the balance here from Z to E is going to be 6. So now I have, again, a right triangle where I'm given the hypotenuse E to F, which is just the distance between the centers and that's 14. I'm given ZE, which I've figured out by subtraction, so I can figure out what ZF is. So ZF squared plus ZE squared is equal to EF squared. ZF squared plus 6 squared is equal to 14 squared. Ends up that ZF squared is equal to 160. ZF is equal to plus or minus 4 root 10. I know that that distance has to be a positive value. So ZF ends up being 4 root 10. Well, I know that ZF, ZF is going to be uh, 4 root 10 and also the same length as CB because I have a rectangle and opposite sides are congruent. So CB ends up being 4 root 10. All right, you guys stand with me. Okay, so now we're going to use that information. And uh, I'm also, and again, I have to say that I love this book because we're going to draw on the relationship of these two triangles, ZEF and BEA, because we know that they're similar triangles, right? I know that... Uh, this length here, right, uh, this uh, angle here is uh, ZEF, is going to be congruent to BFA. Uh, I have two parallel lines here, and they're cut by a transversal, so I know that these two angles are going to be congruent. Um, and then I also know, again, that these two angles are congruent as well because I have two parallel lines cut by transversal FB. So now I'm dealing with two similar triangles in ZEF and BFA. And I can just establish the relationship. So I have triangle ZEF, which is similar to triangle BFA. And I establish the relationships between the sides. ZF is to BA as ZE is to BF. I know that ZF is 4 root 10. I don't know what BA is. I'm trying to figure that out. I know that ZE is 6 units. And I know that BF is 4 units. Right? So if you cross multiply, you'll end up with BA uh, equaling 16 root 10 over 6, which is 8 root 10 over 3. And that's your answer. So that's how we figure out <clears throat> the length of AB, 8 root 10 over 3. OK, last problem. Oh, no, we've got two more to go. OK, number 28. Again, this is a lot of problems, but these are really good problems to figure out. Circles P and Q are tangent to each other. And to the axes is shown PQ, the distance between the centers is 26, AB is 24. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, identify the length between A and P as X. Okay, and we're going to use again our common uh, internal tangent, I'm sorry, common external tangent uh, information and procedure to find out the length <clears throat> of P to Q. That's the, really the line of centers. Actually, we have that. In. We want to find out what LQ is. All right, so I know that AP is equal to X. I know that P 
L is equal to 24, we're given that. Uh, and I know that P to Q is equal to 26. I've defined, again, A to P is X, so B to L is also X. I know that LQ is going to be 10, right? So if you recall, I've got a Pythagorean triple 10, 24, 26. So LQ is going to end up being 10, or you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that LQ is equal to 10. So now I know that I can figure out what x is because x plus 10, so bq plus, or uh, pq, x plus 10 plus x is going to be equal to 26. Okay, so how did I get x plus 10 plus x is equal to 26? Well, it's this distance here, the radius from p to the point of tangency is going to be x. And I know that the radius b of q, bq, is equal to x plus 10. So I have the radius of circle p is equal to x, and the radius of circle q is equal to x plus 10. I got that from figuring out uh, the prior issue with um, the uh, line of centers. So I know x plus 10 plus x is equal to 26. x is equal now to 8. So I can say, <clears throat> Now that uh, Q is going to be at 18, 8, and P is going to be at 8, 42. So how did I get that? Well, first, let's take care of uh, point Q. And I know that X plus 10, X is equal to 8, so X plus 10 is equal to 18. So I know that the horizontal distance or the X coordinate value for Q is going to be 18, so X plus 10. Right. Now, I also know that uh, the distance from Q to uh, this point here, so from B to uh, the origin, is going to be 8 units. And I know that Excuse me, the point Q is going to be 18, 18, right? So I have uh, the radius here, B to Q, is 18. It's X plus 10. So the distance from B to the origin or from Q to the point of tangency is also going to be the same distance as the radius. So this is also 18. We can call this G here. So Q to G is also 18 units. So my uh, point Q is going to be 18, uh, 18. I know that the distance, the x distance from A to P is 8 because x is equal to 8. I know that Q to G is 18, and I know that A to B is 24. So I just add 24 here uh, to 18, and I get 42. So my point P is going to be at 8, 42. All right, last problem, and then we'll be done. So I have three tangent circles, tangent A, tangent, uh, uh, three circles, circle A, circle B, and circle C, and they're all tangent to each other. So I'm going to define the radius of the circle in terms of A, B, and C, and I'm given that B, C is equal to A, A, C is equal to B, and A, B is equal to C. Okay, so what I've done is I've uh, determined that the distance here from B uh, to this point of tangency is going to be X. Right, I know that A, B is equal to C, so A to this point of tangency is going to be equal to CX. So again, I'm using the definition of a radius here to figure out, and this is kind of like a walk around problem in a way, uh, to figure out the lengths of each of these radii. So I have in terms of X first, so I have X here, then C minus X, C minus X for this radius. Uh, this is going to be X here for this radius, B, C is equal to A, so C to the point of tangency is A minus X. And then C to this point of tangency is also going to be A minus X. All right, so I can say then that A plus C minus 2X. So if I add these all together, all right, so if I add these all together, uh, I'm going to say, uh, and then I get, uh, actually, I know that AC is equal to B. So this length here, A to C is equal to B. So I can say that uh, B is equal to C minus X plus A minus X. Uh, so B is equal to C minus X plus A minus X, which ends up being A plus C 
minus 2x. So I say a plus b minus 2x is equal to b, given that the length ac is equal to b. All right, now I can rewrite that <clears throat> as a plus c minus b is equal to 2x, or x is equal to a plus c minus b over 2. All right, so I'm rewriting uh, the value of x in terms of a, b, and c. All right, well, I know that the radius of uh, circle A is C minus X, right? I've defined it as C minus X. So now all I have to do is replace or substitute the value that I've just gotten for X as A plus B, I'm sorry, A plus C minus B over 2 in for X. So I get C minus A plus C minus B over 2. Well, I, in order to add or subtract fractions, we need to make sure we have a common denominator. The common denominator is 2. So I can say that c is equal to 2c over 2. So now I have 2c over 2 minus a plus c minus b. And remember, we have to distribute uh, the negative sign. Right? So I have 2c minus a minus c plus b. And I'm left with c minus a plus b over 2. Right? So that's how you figure out how to rewrite the radius of the circle A in terms of A, B, and C. So first we defined uh, one segment of one of the, uh, or the radius of one of the circles as X. We walked around the problem uh, given the values that we've gotten for A, uh, A, B, and C for each of the different segments or the lines of centers. And then as we walked around the problem, we defined each of the radii in terms of the letter and X. Then we solved for X and then we rewrote the radius based on uh, the value that we determined using x and the value that was given. Uh, and then just simple math, uh, subtract, subtracting two fractions in order to end up with c minus a plus b over 2 as the length of the radius for circle a. Okay, that's it. Come back and join us if you want to review the lessons and not in math.